What's going on, everybody? So today we are going to talk about the different types of service checker. Um, what do I call these? Not really modes. It's more of a view, right? So a lot of people understand service checker as a whole, but let's talk about the different views um, more specifically. Let's just jump right in like we always do. And I'm going to randomly select one and hit display operational data. Ta-da! This is what you're used to, right? This you're used to all the squiggly lines, um, copious amounts of information that are millions and millions of data sets long, right? That allow you to populate things on different graphs, on offs, just randomly clicking things here. Oh, no, nope, there's too many things. So we have to say, okay, my bad. Uh, that's too many things. But what if I told you there's a different view than your standard service checker view? Now, again, I'll show you what version I'm rocking, but this is your standard view, right? This is standard data, waves and crests flowing through um, all the information. This is what I've used to troubleshoot with to show you guys how to troubleshoot a lot of these problems. But what if there's a different way to look at this? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the main menu here. And as you can see, I did finally enable. Someone mentioned that I didn't have my SD card stuff enabled. So yes, I do know how to do it. I'll make a video about it so you can see exactly how to enable it too on your laptop and use the uh, SD card function on the service checker for, if not sure why it's kept a secret. Um, but this is the version I'm rocking. So you can't see that, now you can. 1.4.4, uh, 1.4.4, 1 yep. And then model type three, 1.69D. Now, so you saw the regular view, lines and graphs and all this stuff like that. Let me take you over into a world of mystery and go to right here. So it's settings, top left, go down to show graph. And there's standard view. And then there's a super secret, top secret detailed view. And you're gonna be like, ooh, what is that? And I'm gonna show you. I'm so happy that I get to be the one that actually shows you this. So display operational data and drum roll, please. It does take a hot minute to load because it is a lot of information. Watch out, what the heck is this? So um, this actually came out somewhere close to two years ago. Uh, so I'm sorry that you are very late to the party, um, but this is what we call detailed view. Okay, what does detailed view on service checker allow us to do? Now, you know all the information that we saw before, right? And you know how I can pan to the left, pan to the right, zoom in, zoom out. Um, detailed view allows me to see the entire 61 hours uh, of data in one fell swoop on my screen. Why is this important? Because remember, when we're looking at data, sometimes it's it's better to see how things correlate over time and also to understand the full load of a system, what fan coils are in cooling, who's on, who's off, what's going on in that data snippet, and this allows us to do that. So let's, let's break this down because I'll be honest, this is a little overwhelming if you've never seen this before. Um, so if we're looking at this, the this top area here, let's break out the colors. Here we go. Temperature, right? So we have temperature up here. That's this box here. You'll notice here on the right hand side are all the items that I am currently populating inside there. Okay. Then the same thing over here. Here's your pressure on and off, right? So these are on, right? Up, down means off. These are all my, you know, restart standby, safety parameters, protocols, blah, blah, blah very important compressor speeds right that's all going to be here populated on the same chart you can kind of see how my compressor speeds populate over time expansion valve pulses and fan speeds not sure why they put those under the same tab but they did those are right there oh now i'm drawing everywhere my mouse click did not take that one okay uh, and then eev percentages over scale and time that is also here that tells you our targets um, pressures everything else like that and then my favorite part about detailed view is the indoor unit operation on off. You can see here in this window segment that everything for the most part was kind of in a cooling mode uh, with, or not a cooling mode, everything was on, right? From here to here, this is probably setting mode two six. Then you can see as things progress over time, uh, they turn on, they turn off. Orange is heating, uh, blue is cooling. And then you see these long data snippets here 
of the dark blue means that that unit was on. You can see only a few units were on for most of this data snippet. Um, and maybe those are ones that I should look at. Maybe those are ones I should investigate. So, and at the very, 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 very bottom, we have our, um, you know, indoor unit data. Uh, and as you can see, it is a complete disaster, which is why it took so long to load this as opposed to the other ones. So you'll notice here, you've got all your different indoor gas pipe temperatures. So what's great about this detailed view, although it's very overwhelming. So I suggest that you get in here, you poke around, you take a look, um, you see what's what, what makes sense to you. But if you look here, the, the great thing about this is this. I can see both of my modules here side by side, right? I can see that both my subcoolers are at 20 pulses. Okay, does this stay that way, right? Is it, is it, is it modulate that way? And as you can notice, the clicks are a little bit delayed because again, it's pulling up a lot of information. But I can also change the graph range if I wanted to after it catches up to all the clicks. Yeah, I click a lot, so this might take a hot minute to um, catch back up. <laughs> but I can change it to three hours worth of operational data. Um, you remember, we said that it populates everything. Again, this is a lot of information, but this does allow me to, to scroll through the different time snippets and the data snippets here on the left, as well as also the right. See, as I can scroll through how this system operated, what this does, it lets me see that three hour segment that we talk about zooming out and seeing, uh, but it allows me to see it across the board. So now I'm no longer looking at just one specific area on service checker, um, I can populate all my information at one time and see the correlations between everything. It also is a great tool to use when we're looking at different things such as um, compressor speeds between all four compressors and the system and how they ramp up and how they ramp down. I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize myself a little bit just for scale. But you'll notice here too, I can also see all my indoor units and what modes they're in, all in a nice little slide graph to the left. Uh, the same thing here can be said if I click in this area and I scroll down. It allows me to see what everything is doing across the board between modules and what they actually look like. Now I can also clean this up too and just show specific thing. And so we just display graph selection in the bottom left. Let's say I want to take a lot of this stuff away. Maybe I'm only concerned with valve pulses, right? Not EV percentages. Let's get rid of temperature, thermostat on and off, pressure on and off. Let's just do these three and I hit OK. So what it's going to do now is it's going to reshuffle what I see and reduce the amount of, uh, you know, items that are on my screen uh, to then, you know, refresh what we're looking at here. And again, it should take some time. Maybe I break it very likely. It's she's a she's an old girl. OK, you got to let her process. We are dealing with what, 1985 graphics. Um, you know, that takes a lot of processing power. My computer may not be able to handle it. So again, this is designed to allow you to see what every indoor unit thermostat is doing without having to scroll through teeny tiny time snippets. This lets me look at everything in a three hour window and then minimize what those things look like so that I can get a better viewpoint of what it's doing and why it's doing it because these things matter. This allows me to see compressor rotations as they correlate to suction pressure. Um, it lets me see compressor, um, you know, speeds as well as as it correlates to thermostats turning on and off for demand. If I wanted to, I could populate valve pulses for all my indoor units. Maybe I see a compressor uh, reduction in speed as my valve pulses close off, right? I could see that correlation between it because it draws a line from top to bottom um, for all of these things together. And I have officially broken it. Yes. Let's close the program. Um, yeah. So. Again, this is 62 hours of data, um, not the most foolproof, <laughs> as you can see. Um, I did crash it, so there's that. Um, I pride myself on breaking programs, especially uh, when it comes to the RV program. So let's choose something a little bit more in the neck of the woods of, let's say, an hour and 52 minutes here. Display operational data. And again, it's going to always go back to this range as long as I, uh, you know, have this selected in the top left. So this one might be a little bit more forgiving. Let's see. Maybe she'll play ball. Maybe a sweet talker. Nope. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Whew. Almost broke it again. So um, as you can see here, I've eliminated a lot of the stuff I don't need to see. And maybe I'm just looking for something very specific. 
What I can also do is I can take screenshots, not that a customer is going to understand any of this, um, but this allows you to take those correlations that you might see in normal service checker data and kind of pull them over to this detailed mode. See, again, I can see everything here from my outdoor module all in one place. So you'll notice here, right? I don't know why I can't circle over here on the side, but you notice here I can get all this stuff in one spot, right? And so we can also see compressor revolutions as they correlate to each other across this screen. Man, Service Checker really doesn't like it when I record my stuff. As you can see, this program is very reliable. So good work there, Daikin. Um, you know, maybe it's time to give it an overhaul. Uh, I don't think she is built for detailed view. So here is me showing you a brand new mode that allows you to do one thing, crash Service Checker consistently. Um, but obviously I can go back, I can go to this, I can go back to standard view. Uh, this is the view that I do enjoy to look at. This is the view that I populate most of my data in. Um, she, she plays really nice. And I can go through that and there you go. And so we're back to normal view. But again, detailed view, if you're patient enough and not screen recording like I am right now, um, it's a very great program to correlate things together. So if you know specifically what you want to see a correlation between, typically suction pressure correlates to compressor speeds, but maybe I also want to correlate it with those two things with indoor valve pulses. Um, and again, I can't populate all those valve pulses here, but if I go to detailed view, I can see all my valve pulses for every indoor unit at the same time. And I can see, well, wait a minute, 50% of them shut. And then my compressor speed went way down, right? And my suction pressure dropped or skyrocketed or did whatever. Um, it's helping you collect, collect, connect those dots between everything at one time. So, okay, service checker, detailed view. Now you know, you're in the know. Um, sorry it took two years to tell you. So see you on the next one, guys.